We are getting to know new characters in Cymbeline today. Well, sort of, we met them yesterday, but we get to learn a little bit more about them today because brand new characters introduced in Act 3, Scene 3, we need to figure out who they are. So we have a couple big like exposition type monologues here from Belarius with just one tiny little introduction from Guiderius in the middle. So this will be Belarius and this will be Guiderius for his quick little tidbit. And just to, to set the scene again, Belarius lives in a cave with these kids, um, Guiderius and what is the other one's name? It's something really like kind of long and hideous. Give me a second. It is Averigus. Guiderius and Averigus. Anyway, so the, the three of them live in this cave in the middle of nowhere and Valarius yesterday was saying that they have the best life because it's great to not be in the court and to be surrounded by nature because nature is so inspiring and that sort of thing. And the boys are also like, yeah, that's great, but we don't know any different. So we won't be able to say the same thing to our kids that you say to us because we've only ever known the nature. So yay nature. And Valaria says, how you speak? Did you but know the city's usuries and felt them knowingly? The art of the court as hard to leave as keep, whose top to climb is certain falling, or so slippery that the fear's as bad as falling. The toil of the war, a pain that only seems to seek out danger in the name of fame and honor, which dies in the search, and half as oft a slanderous epitaph as record of fair act, nay, many times doth ill deserve by doing well. What's worse must curtsy at the censure. Oh, boys, this story the world may read in me. My body's marked with Roman swords, and my report was once first with the best of note. Cymbeline loved me, and when a soldier was the theme, my name was not far off. Then was I as a tree whose boughs did bend with fruit. But in one night, a storm or robbery, call it what you will, shook down my mellow hangings, nay, my leaves, and left me bare to weather, uncertain favor, my fault being nothing, as I have told you oft, but that two villains whose false oaths prevailed before my perfect honor swore to Cymbeline I was confederate with the Romans. So followed my banishment, and this twenty years, this rock and these demeans have been my world, where I have lived at honest freedom, paid more pious debts to heaven than in all the foreend of my time. But up to the mountains. This is not hunter's language. He that strikes the venison first so shall be the lord of the feast. The, to him the other two shall minister, and we will fear no poison which attends in place of greater state. I'll meet you in the valleys. And then the boys leave. How hard is it to hide the sparks of nature? These boys know little, they are sons to the king. Nor Cymbeline dreams that they are alive, they think they are mine. And though trained up thus meanly in the cave, where on the bow their thoughts do hit the roofs of the palaces, and nature prompts them in simple and low things to prince it, much beyond the trick of others. This Palador, the heir of Cymbeline and Britain, who the king his father called Guiderius, Jove, when on my three-foot stool I sit and tell the warlike feats I have done, his spirits fly out into my story. Say, Thus mine enemy fell, and thus I set my foot on his neck. Even then, the princely blood flows in his cheeks. He sweats, strains his young nerves, and puts himself in posture that acts my words. The younger brother, Cadwall, once Arvirgus, in as like a figure, strikes life into my speech and shows me much more his own conceiving. Hark! The game is roused. Oh, Cymbeline, 
heaven and my conscience knows thou didst unjustly banish me whereon at three and two years old i stole these babes thinking to bar thee of succession as thou reftst me of my lands here file who wast thou wast their nurse they took thee for their mother and every day do honor to her grave myself belarius that am um, mergen called they take for natural father <laughs> The game is up. Exposition and intrigue. Ah, so if you remember from like the very first scene, they talked about how the king had these two sons that were stolen in infancy. And that's why he's so protective of Imogen because she's the only child that he has left. Well, these sons were stolen by Valarius and taken and to be raised in a cave because Valarius was pissed off at Cymbeline for banishing him and didn't want Cymbeline to have a male heir. So now they're growing up in the forest and the boys don't know any better, but one of them is actually first in line to be the king and we'll see how all this turns out tomorrow or at least we'll get a little more progress in the story i'll see you